let's talk about what happens if you want to store something other than numbers. For example, if I wanted to store or represent the letter A, how do I represent the letter A in binary? I can't do it directly because the binary scheme is designed or represents numbers. So what we use instead is we use what's called a code. Basically, this is the same exact thing as the old fashioned secret code um, where one thing represents another. So the code is a lookup table that links the letters to numbers. So the computer isn't really dealing with letters. What it's dealing with is numbers and you're telling it to treat these numbers like letters. So for example, um, there's a standard called the ASCII or ASCII code um, is a way to translate from numbers to letters. So when you store the letter A in the computer, you're not really storing a letter A. What you're doing instead is you're storing a um, a uh, code, equivalent number. Let me hop over here and we'll show you that table. This is the ASCII code table. And you'll see that each of the each of the letters corresponds to some sort of code. So for example, if I wanted to store the letter A, it's right here in the table. It is number 65 in decimal. So if I represented the number 65 with my binary information, that would correspond to the letter A. If I wanted to store a capital N, it would be 78. If I wanted a lowercase n, it would be 110. These would have to be represented in binary, of course, for the computer to handle them. But you'll notice that anything the computer can treat as part of a string, spaces, exclamation points, plus signs, things like that. There's also non-printing characters down here, like carriage returns, backspaces, end of line, uh, things like that are all part of this ASCII code. Now, what happened is that there's many more codes than just ASCII available. There's uh, Unicode nowadays where they not only use these 256 values, 127 values in ASCII, but they use uh, thousands of things, especially used for um, Asian languages where there's many, many more characters than are used in a, um, in a Western alphabet. So let's have, see how we would represent the letter R in binary. So here we have 82 is the ASCII code equivalent for R. So let's go back here and see if we can generate the number 82. And we didn't really talk uh, about how to go from decimal to, um, to binary. So what we generally do is find the largest number that you can possibly get. So here's 64, so if we put a one there, now if we add 632, we'll go over 80, what was it again? 82. So we can't go there. So let's see, if we add in 16, we're now at 80, so now we want to add in a 2, and we should now have the binary number 1010010. That is decimal 82, and if we were using ASCII code, that representation would be the letter A. So in order to store all of those ASCII codes, we would need 127 different values, which means we need at least to store a 7-bit number. Now, in most cases, you don't use 7 bits. You use go ahead and use 8 because that's a byte. Uh, they just don't use the top end when you're using ASCII, the top bit. So inside of computers, letters are usually represented by bytes.